thank you so much for that. Um, it gives us a context of his life. I wanted to point out that hanging here are some of Rin's favorite t-shirts uh, collected from all over the world, as well as a, a couple of Jane costume that he acquired as well, so you can look at that. On the table at the back is a revolving movie, a little movie of photographs of Rin's life that we uh, put together, Christina and I, um, celebrating uh, his uh, diverse interests, uh, as well as, of course, his books. So uh, the next person I would like to invite to come and share her thoughts about Rin is somebody who uh, used his scholarship and brains on a regular basis, Victoria Moran. <laughs> Thank you. It was so wonderful to get to hear more about Rin from a family setting and a deeper background. Now, I don't remember not knowing Rin in my vegetarian vegan life, and that's practically forever. I used to hear him speak at conferences, and then in between times I got to know him better by reading his books, always with the dictionary. <laughs> That's why I love the vegan guy. That was something that Rin wrote that didn't require it. <laughs> and when I moved to New York in 2000, I too would see him in Union Square Park. And I always used to think, Rin reminds me of somebody. I didn't know who. I just knew there was some sort of resemblance to somebody that I either knew a long time ago or should have known. And it was only recently when I started watching Downton Abbey that I had it. He reminds me of Lord Grimm. Because <laughs> he had the wonderful, wonderful graciousness and, and elegance. He was so well-spoken in a way that, that is rare these days. I got to know Rin really the best in the past couple of years after I started a program called Main Street Vegan Academy, which trains vegan lifestyle coaches and educators. So people come here from around the world for a little boutique program. But I knew from the moment that I had the idea for the academy that it could not happen without Rin as the history professor. And I have to say that since he's gone, I have found him to be virtually irreplaceable. But it was so interesting to watch his scholarly way of teaching and relating. Because so many of the people that would come to teach, and I suppose myself included, have this idea of, woo, listen to this, and we're going to bring you over, and we're going to do a little song and dance and make the world vegan because we're going to entertain it into you. Grin was different, always scholarly, always with the highest intellectual standards. Now for the past few courses with Christine, they put together a wonderful PowerPoint program about the history of vegetarianism, which is wonderful to have, so that there's something solid that tells Rin's interpretation of vegetarian history from Pythagoras to now. But before the PowerPoint presentation, he would come with notes, usually on legal pad, sometimes written in pencil, <coughs> And he would study them, even in the minutes leading up to when he was going to speak, because he so wanted to give people the very, very best. Even though he knew this, like the back of his hand, he had written and spoken about this topic for years, but he would still study his notes just to make sure that it was just right. And it always was. I'll never forget the very first class that Rin taught. And after he was finished, a young man who was a little bit brash and brazen and kind of knew a lot, and he said, I could listen to Rin forever, <laughs> as could we all. But my very favorite memory, and one that I'll always carry with me, was at that class, in the Q&A, there was never much Q&A, because he said everything. Uh -huh. But one woman said, you know, you talked about Genesis 129 and how that says that we're supposed to be vegetarian. You talked about John the Baptist as a vegetarian Essene. But people always ask me, what about the loaves and the fishes? And Rin looked a little bit uncomfortable, and I thought, does he not know the answer? <laughs> well, that can't be, because he always knew the answer. 
And then as he spoke, I realized what it was. It was that to answer that question properly, he had to say something about himself that was not completely humble, stand in the background, as, as Rin often tried to be. But in order to answer the question properly, he needed to begin by saying, well, when I translated the New Testament from the Greek, <laughs> <laughs> and he went on to say that everywhere in the New Testament where the word fish is used, it's the Greek word for fish. But in that particular story, it's a different word. It's a word that has as its first definition relish, a kind of hummus. Second definition, dessert. Third definition, little fishes. And Rin told us that evidently some translator at some point had thought that it was more miraculous to multiply fishes than to multiply Baba Ganesh. <laughs> <laughs> and I do find it interesting today that there was some concern that there wouldn't be enough food. I guess it was mostly my concern. And now I see, Rin, thank you, another miracle of the Los and Tahiti.